Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Monday training video. Today, we're going to be talking about um, body language. In particular, we're going to look at when dogs roll over onto their backs. A lot of dogs do this. Maybe your dog does this. Uh, most of us interpret this as always asking for a belly rub. And sometimes dogs are asking for belly rubs when they roll over. But um, it's also something that scared dogs will do, kind of a please don't hurt me uh, kind of thing. So we're going to take a look at this, try to figure out um, how to tell the difference as best you can. We can't, of course, um, ask the dog exactly what they want, but, um, but there are some things we can look for and some actions we can take to help our dogs be a little bit more comfortable um, around us and around other people when they are um, being approached and possibly petted. All right, so let's dig in. Does my dog want a belly rub? All right, this is what is on the docket for today. I'm just going to briefly touch on what is body language anyway. Um, then we'll talk about what to look for when a dog rolls over to try to interpret at least sort of, are they nervous? Are they relaxed? And then we'll look at several video examples. Um, I think that's one of the easiest ways to get, you know, to get eyes on many examples. There'll be variations and um, it'll give you sort of a better mental database to use when you next time you are trying to decide whether to give a dog a belly rub or not. All right. So what is fearful body language? This might seem obvious, but I just want to go through a couple points. Um, body language is behavior. Uh, body language are, consists of observable behaviors. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to see it. Um, we assume that what we're seeing, the behaviors we see that we call body language, are correlated with internal events in the dog, like feelings or emotions. Um, they may or may not be, and we don't really have a way to sort of prove it. But um, but there is, you know, there's a fair amount of certain, certainly anecdotal evidence, and um, there may be some experimental experimental evidence. I'm not sure um, correlating some types of body language with things like uh, respiration or heart rate or cortisol or something like that. But in general, we tend to make interpretations about a dog's emotional state from looking at their body language. Uh, one reason we care. I mean, we care about how our dogs feel, of course, but another reason to care about body language, fearful body language in particular, is that some more subtle signs, smaller behaviors, fearful behaviors, can predict, if, if the environment doesn't change, or if it worsens, can predict more severe behaviors. So um, there are sequences, sort of aggressive sequences that vary among individuals, but a lot of times you'll see um, I think that maybe the ladder of aggression has this. Um, that's a graphic that has been around a while where you look at um, a dog might freeze. There might be a quote unquote hard eye, sort of dilated pupil. Maybe you see the whites of the eye. Um, you could see a lip lift, growling, snarling. And, you know, you kind of go up the ladder until you might get to a bite. So definitely all dogs don't show all those behaviors. Um, many don't show all those behaviors. and if a dog growls and the person who was approaching them backs off, that might be the end of it. But the reason why we want to pay attention to these is that we'd like to avoid the dog escalating to these more, uh, speaking more loudly, basically. Um, and I also want to mention that body language is pretty open to interpretation. Um, even among dog experts, professional dog trainers, veterinarians, um, you can see people arguing online, looking at the same video, and one person says, that dog's having a great time. And someone else says, I think that dog's really stressed out. Um, and both of those, based on just a video, that, and neither person knows the dog or was in that situation, um, they're just opinions. You can't say who's right or wrong. So bear that in mind. The videos I'm going to show you today, I will tell you what my opinion is um, based on many years of working with dogs, but that doesn't mean that another professional might not look at that and say, hmm. Personally, I think that dog's a little nervous when I didn't think so. All right, because body language is behavior, it can be reinforced or punished or extinguished. Um, you will often hear people say, don't punish the growl. 
you know, because if you punish the growl, the dog may stop growling, but they still want the whatever scary thing is happening to stop. So they may go straight to biting. The same thing could happen with um, what we may think of as more precursor behaviors to growling. So a freeze, a lip lick, um, a tucked tail. It's possible that those things could be punished or extinguished um, if we don't pay attention to them. Whereas if we back off, they may be reinforced. This is not the same as reinforcing fear. Fear is an emotion, not a behavior. Um, we want to reinforce small signs of discomfort um, so that the dog knows they can use those to communicate. Of course, whatever is making the dog uncomfortable, we want to remove and maybe try to help them feel better about that. But if the choice in the moment is between reinforcing that, you know, the tuck tail, the shaking, the lifting the paw by backing off, or saying, no, I don't want to reinforce this fearful looking behavior. I'm going to stand my ground. You may just end up with increased fear and aggression, uh, more aggressive behavior. Um, if this doesn't make sense, let me know. Go ahead and put your comments below wherever you're watching the video or your questions, and they'll pop up for me. Um, but it is important to realize that we can reinforce, um, punish, and extinguish body language, things that we call body language because it is behavior. I, for instance, I'm pretty sure that... Um, Multiple times I have reinforced tail wagging in my dogs during um, training sessions. And that, and so me interpreting that to mean the dog's happy might be a little problematic <laughs> because I, you know, I was doing a duration and they wait a while and then they start wagging their tail and then they get the treat just because we've reached a certain duration. I didn't re reinforce them because they're wagging their tail, but that doesn't mean the tail wagging was not reinforced by food. All right. And so we think because we think that um, these observable behaviors that we call body language are correlated with um, internal events or internal quote unquote states, um, a way to think of them is potentially a sign of the dog's motivation to either avoid or escape something that immediately preceded this body language or to avoid or escape whatever is predicted by the thing that preceded it. And that was kind of that's kind of a mouthful. What I mean by that is. Um, say your dog is really afraid, um, of their harness. This was, um, the case last week that prompted me to do this video this week. Um, it may be the harness itself the dog is afraid of or the harnessing. And so they may say roll over or cower when you try to put the harness on them. But over time, you approaching with the harness, um, may elicit the, the sort of scared behavior because it predicts the bad thing, the harnessing. So I hope that um, that makes sense. So that dog wants to escape something scary. Um, and so whatever immediately preceded that behavior either is likely aversive to the dog or predicts something aversive coming up. All right. So this is a pretty gross simplification, but sometimes I think and I think most of us think, rolling over is um, a behavior that in the past has been reinforced by attention by petting. And so um, if the dog does roll over, we think, okay, they want attention right now. That's a reinforce. That's something that would be reinforcing this behavior right now. Whereas there are other dogs who appear afraid when they roll over and kind of stiff. And um, in those cases, we interpret that as, okay, the dog is, is scared. They want to escape or avoid something scary. And these are the two kind of um, opposites that we want to learn about so that we don't um, make the mistake of trying to give a belly rub to a dog who's terrified. All right, so how can you tell? This is not an exhaustive list, but I thought it might be helpful to do a quick run through through a sort of checklist of different body parts. Um, and as you'll see in the video, you know, a single body part, what a single body part of the dog is doing, taking independently might not give you a full enough picture. So um, don't like freak out if your dog is doing one, you know, stop sign thing, but everything else is green. That doesn't mean your dog hates belly rubs. All right. So ears in general, um, but again, can vary between individuals. Um, pinned ears, so ears that are kind of flattened back against the dog's head can mean Mm, maybe don't continue to approach or try to pet. Whereas loose and loose ears that are um, up or forward depends on if the dog has, you know, floppy ears or not, um, are more of a happy signal. But again, don't take anything in isolation <laughs> as a sign. 
Uh, eyes, you'll see in the video several examples of dogs um, whose eyes are kind of wide and the white of their eyes showing. Some people call that whale eye. That would be something to notice and be like, mm, maybe I shouldn't pet this dog right now. Whereas, quote unquote, soft eyes, which um, most people mean sort of not wide, wide open, almond shape, um, the pupil not super dilated, sort of appropriately dilated for the light level in the room. Um, those are relaxed, happy eyes. Mouth, um, a tense or closed mouth is a potential stop sign for approaching and petting a dog. And also really heavy panting. You know, it's not that hot and the dog's breathing really heavily and maybe their lips, their mouth really wide open, the corners of their mouth are drawn way back. That could be quote unquote stress panting, um, which might indicate the dog is um, not super relaxed right now and maybe you don't wanna touch them. Whereas in a more relaxed open mouth is, um, is something that wouldn't would give me less less pause when deciding whether to to pet the dog. The tail, a tucked tail, I think most of you know what that looks like. That can be just down a little bit between the legs or even all the way up against the belly. That's a scared dog. Do not give that dog a belly rub. A relaxed tail or a wagging tail could <laughs> um, could let you know that the dog is relaxed, but not always. And I have an example of that in the video. Um, and a big one, again, this is, um, let me get rid of this thing. Okay. This is again, something that, you know, there's a kind of a, a spectrum of a still tense body and loose wiggly body and a, a happy dog isn't always super wiggly, but in general, a really still body. Hmm. I, I wouldn't touch a dog if, especially not one of, you know, if it's a dog, I don't know very well. If the dog's really still and has rolled over, I'm not going to approach and pet them. That is potentially a sign that they're not comfortable. Whereas a more relaxed, loose body or kind of wiggly, um, that dog's probably more relaxed and less likely to bite you if you try to pet them. All right. So we're going to look at a few examples. If you're watching and, and want to participate, go ahead and post below. But um does anyone have any interpretation of this photo? We're gonna look at still photos first, which are a little harder, but I tried to pick sort of more obvious ones and then we'll look at video. So what does everyone think about this dog? Is this a dog that potentially wants a belly rub that is happy and relaxed? Or are you worried about this dog um, being uncomfortable, which may lead to aggression? All right, let's go. Happy and relaxed. Yeah, Emily, I agree. Um, this is a doofy looking dog. <laughs> um, I say ha probably happy and relaxed. I wouldn't worry about approaching this dog. Now, everybody, when you approach a dog, watch, watch the dog and see if their body language changes as you approach. I have an example of that in the video as well. But as this dog looks right now, if he kept looking like that, and I bet he's a little bit wiggly as I approach, I'd, be, I'd feel okay potentially petting him or her. All right. How about this one? So if you're not sure about this, some things that I'm looking for, so we can't tell from a still picture if the dog is stiff or wiggly and a snap. So a snapshot really could be completely misleading, but to me, yeah, I think it is hard to tell, but if I had to pick one <laughs> based on the still photo with a closed mouth and it looks like the pupils may be a bit dilated, um, I, yeah, I would say I would fall on the side of caution on this one. Um, again, I have no, I, I don't know this dog. This is a stock photo. I could be completely wrong about what was going on with this dog in the moment, but in terms of an antecedent to my own behavior, if I see something like this, especially in an unfamiliar dog, or even in one of my own dogs, I would not choose to give a belly rub. So that's the closed mouth, maybe the um, potentially hard eye there, hard, hard to see. And then in real life, you would have some, some information on whether the dog is wiggly or not. All right. So I said, mm, might be nervous. I'm, I'm going to skip this, this belly rub opportunity. <laughs> All right, how about this uh, this pup? So 
this is another stock photo. Um, so I'm sorry I don't have the dog's whole body. There may be other signs to go by. Yeah, nervous. I, I think so too. The ears look like they're back and pinned a bit. Um, mouth is tightly closed. Um, you can see a little bit of the white of the eye. The eye is kind of squinty, which is a thing that some nervous dogs do. Um, it's kind of, it's often called part of a sort of an appeasing signal, kind of squinty eyes. Please don't hurt me. So this dog also, um, I definitely wouldn't impose myself on. I wouldn't go up and try to pet this dog's belly. All right, this might be the last one. How about this beagly guy? Or gal. Yeah, relaxed. I think so. I would say relaxed just based on what we can see in the photo. Mouth is open a little bit. Eyes look kind of almond shaped. Can't tell about the ears because they're in the grass. Kind of looks like from the dog's body position, he might be wiggling around in the grass. So I don't see anything in this photo that, that makes me worry. All right, where are we now? Oh, we have a, we do have a couple more. All right, how about these guys? And so a lot of these, by the way, are what you get if I go into stock photos and type in dog belly rub. <laughs> um, it's a little concerning actually. So we've got two, two pups here, both on their backs, possibly likely given the, they look like informal photos. I'm guessing they're being petted by their owners, by their family. The guy on the um, left, nervous. Yeah, I would say nervous. I, you can see white of the eye. The eye looks kind of wide open, tight mouth. We can't tell if the dog's moving, but just based on the still photo, I don't think that the dog also looks like maybe their ears are pinned. And yeah, Emily, the one on the right also is doing a tongue flick in the photo, <laughs> which is a sign of nervousness. Um, eyes are wide open. Looks like the pupils are really dilated. Maybe one ear is pinned. So both these dogs, um, my my guess would be they probably aren't enjoying the, what's being done to them. Doesn't mean they won't tolerate it. Doesn't mean they'll bite, especially if it's their family petting them. Um, but still. All right. How about these kids? And by the way, if you're not sure, you don't, you definitely don't have to respond, but also don't feel nervous about being right or wrong. Um, when I started working with my own dogs with the trainer many years ago, um, and the trainer said, oh, you can really tell, you know, he's nervous right now or he's guarding something right now. I, I was like, what? <laughs> how can you tell? And you said, and, you know, she said, well, just look at him. Look how how his body is. And I was like, he looks like a dog. So <laughs> if that's what you're seeing, if you're like, yep, there are a lot of dogs in these photos. Um, don't feel discouraged because I was eventually able to learn um to recognize some of these symbols. It just, it takes practice, lots of, lots of practice. Um, okay, so these two pups um, are both look like they're puppies. And um, yeah, the left one, I think does look pl potentially playful or happy. Um, mouth open, eyes mm, pretty wide, but could be a goofy wide. So hard to say for sure, but to me that face looks happy with the, with the mouth open. Um, the husky puppy, um, hard to say, could be nervous on, I think maybe it's just because I have huskies. To me, that looks like the mischievous husky puppy look, um, may or may not want a belly rub, but, um, I don't think is scared. The open mouth, um, makes me think that the dog is probably in playful mode, but I'm not hundred percent sure. But th this is an example of how, you know, I, I don't know these dogs. I'm, I'm just giving you my impressions based on my experience, but I could be, I could be wrong. And you can see, well, this husky puppy has some white of the eye showing. So doesn't that make them nervous? Well, not always, not necessarily. Um, 
And if we had video, we would have a lot more information. So we are going to be looking at the video. So I, I came down on happy on both of these. Um, like I said, you it doesn't mean I'm right. All right. I think this is the last still photo. And I like this one because this is the same dog. Anyone have any guesses? Who are, is this dog happy, nervous, one of each? I know this seems like a lot of examples, but part the reason for this is because I think the repetition, seeing lots of different dogs and lots of different body language is how we get better at this. So I personally think that, um, yeah, Emily, I agree that the left one looks more relaxed, like that open mouth, the tail hanging out, this or the tail, good Lord, the tongue hanging out the side of, it, of the mouth kind of looks, you know, could be playful, goofy. Um, looks relatively relaxed to me. The one on the right, ears back, mouth um, tightly closed, kind of looking away potentially from the person. Hmm, a dog, maybe, and actually, you can kind of see the tip of the tail in the lower right corner. That could be a tucked up tail because that tail shouldn't really be there if it was relaxed. So my guess is that that guy or girl is a little anxious. So I probably wouldn't, I would stop whatever I was doing if I got that body language. Okay, that is to remind me to go to video. All right. Oop. All right, so um, I give you the answers already on these because <laughs> I wanted them just in the video. So this, um, what's interesting is that I went on to uh, Canva and Shutterstock and also dug through um, a lot of my videos and friends' videos, and I found it exceedingly difficult to get a video of a dog who was getting a belly rub and looked totally relaxed. <laughs> Even dogs that, you know, have no particular fear issues, you know, gen, you know, their, their people think they like belly rubs. They were still like, there's almost always some little signs of like, mm, the dog wasn't hundred uh, percent comfortable the whole time. So this video is a stock video I'm about to play. And the dog looks to me, I don't see any signs of nervousness, but what's interesting about it is that this dog was doing this as a trick for a treat. This was not, no one was coming to pet this dog. But look at that tail, big goofy smile, wiggling, wiggly body. So really nice. Now, how, now take a look at this dog. Um, a lot of people would approach this dog to pet and think that the dog wants a belly rub because you'll see the tail is wagging. But look at those eyes, those big scared eyes, white of the eye, mouth tightly closed, ears are pinned back, body is really still except the tail. I would not pet that dog. I think that dog is scared. All right. This video um, is a dog who is soliciting petting from me. And I wanted to show it because um, you can see some of her behaviors that that are like encouraging me to get closer to her, but she also has pinned ears, um, which is under our, you know, potentially scared side of the chart. So this is an example of how, um, you know, the dog, you can see behaviors that really look like the dog is listening. And I think she does enjoy the petting. She kind of tries to climb into my lap, but her ears are pinned a lot. Like when she's excited, her ears are pinned. When someone comes in the door, her ears are pinned. If, and I give her a lot of breaks to make sure all right, this little lady, this might be a familiar one to some of you, is afraid of her leash and harness. This is one of our team dogs, Gracie. And you see that um, Jack just came and held up her leash and harness, and this is what she does. So this is a dog who is worried, does not want the leash and harness put on. And um, she's pretty still. Unfortunately, it's not a great angle to see like her face, but her I'm, I'm betting her mouth is closed. She does not want a belly rub right now. She is, um, she doesn't like her harness. All right, Pep here. Um, again, you'll see some mixed body language, but this is a dog who solicited this belly rub, as far as I know, anyway. Um, and you'll see, she, her, watch her body is kind of loose. She's going to roll and make more of her belly available. Her little mouth is kind of, oh, my little graphics in the way, but is open a little bit with the little tooths showing. All right, look at this dog, wags his tail, 
rolls, but lip licking, ears are pinned, and then Rachel's going to bend over and watch what uh, watch the body. Body gets much stiller as her hands get closer, so she backs off. Um, so that dog did not want a belly rub, in my opinion. This dog is a puppy. You'll see some wiggles, and you're going to see some overall that I think this dog is happy and relaxed as a puppy. Pretty social. But there is some body language that tells you that maybe, oh, what you're doing right now, I don't love. So watch the dog turn around and kind of, I think he's, yeah. If a dog um, turns like that and puts their mouth toward your hand, tries to lick it when you're doing something, um, there's, a ch there's a decent chance they would like you to stop that. So even though this dog isn't scared, the petting right in that spot, um, puppy's like, eh, eh, knock it off. Um, but then you'll see still tail wagging. You're going to see some rolling on the back. You can't see your face very well, but um, some stretching, pause. So all this goofy movement and the stretching, I think this puppy is perfectly happy. Does she love all of that, all of the petting? Maybe not, but I'm not worried about a bite. All right, next you're going to see our pup pancake um, in multiple situations. So take a look at this first one. Um, and by the way, this is me approaching the only person that he is okay with, really. But I approached fast. Okay, so I, I hope you can see that this was a please don't hurt me kind of rollover. Um, his tail is down, his ears are tightly pinned back, his eyes are big, his body is pretty still. He does he does not want a belly rub right now. He was intimidated by my approaching. Now here's the same dog, Mr. Pancake. Um, and you'll see I'm pretty careful when I pet him. He has a history of not liking touch at all. So I take lots of little breaks and then watch what he tells me. But look at the difference in body language here from the previous video. He's wiggly. His mouth is open. He keeps trying to get onto my hand when I take breaks. Um, and here's another example just to show that you don't always get all of the happy body language um, details checked off. Like here, his mouth isn't open, but he does this. Um, he has a history of me reinforcing this pawing and rolling on his back behavior with belly rubs, and he continues to do it. And so I'm interpreting that as he finds belly rubs reinforcing in this situation. So you see his mouth is closed, but... Um, but he's pretty chilled out, and then he fell asleep while I was petting him. All right, this is another one where we've got the same dog in two different situations. So watch body language here with the roll. So what do you guys see there? See white of the eye, tail is wagging, right? Oh, must be happy, nope. Um, let me go back, that was really short. You can see there's some shadow here, but you can see the white of her eye, mouth is tightly closed, her ears are pinned. Right? That, don't pet that dog's belly. And here is Coco doing her um, goofy fling herself onto her back on mom's lap to play. Um, <laughs> squirming around. Um, yeah, you can see the whites of the eyes. She's got the, oops, sorry about that. She's got the crazy um, play face. But this is something she chooses to engage in and seems to enjoy. All right. Any questions about those videos? I can go back to any of the, any um, particular ones if you'd like. Um, well, I, I'll watch comments there, but um, here's some take home points. Um, rolling over doesn't always mean the dog wants belly rubs. I hope that's pretty clear from all the videos and photos we just looked at. And if you're not sure, just don't just don't do it. Don't touch them. It's safer. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, and if the dog really did want a belly rub, there's a good chance they'll try harder and do more obvious things to try to get you to rub their belly, which is fine. Um, even if you think the dog is happy or they started out looking really happy, take lots of frequent breaks, remove your hands to see what they do. Um, a lot of dogs, just like people, they might like some touch, but eventually it might get annoying or, you know, they've some, or you've shifted position and now it's a little bit creepy to them for whatever reason. So just take breaks to check. Um, prolonged petting can become aversive even if it started out being something the dog was enjoying. 
Um, and below this video, wherever you're watching this, there should be a link to our petting consent test video, which is at least a few years old now, but it's a longer like eight minute video with lots of examples of more general sort of, does this dog want to be petted? It's not restricted to rolling over. All right, folks, I hope this was helpful. Um, and I, I will thank the wonderful clients from last week who inspired this video, um, who have a, has a pup who rolls over when they come over to do harnessing. Um, just reminded me that this is such a common thing. And all of us, you know, we're all always learning about our dogs and how to um, read them better. They don't, they can't sort of verbalize things to us, but they, they are, there are things that they do that can t give us clues. Uh, about what they're, how they're feeling and how they might respond depending on our own actions <laughs> um, toward them. So if you are looking for more feedback one-on-one -on, -one on reading your own dog's body language or basic skills, that link at the bottom is our training membership where we work on um, just basic, basic training skills for fearful dogs. And all the other links are where you can find us online for more free stuff, our blog, Instagram, YouTube channel, Facebook page, and Facebook support group. All right. Thanks, everybody. If you have any further questions, feel free to put them below the video. Um, even if you're watching this as a recording, I will get them later and I'll come and um, answer the questions. All right, folks, have a lovely week. Next week we are off because here in the U.S. at least it's a holiday weekend um, and I have big plans to sleep past 5 a.m. We'll see how that goes. Oh, Emily says, my dog gives mixed signals about belly rub, so I take lots of little breaks to check in with her. I love that, Emily. I have to do that, too, with Pancake because he's he's a nervous dog, and he does now solicit petting for me quite often, but it's really easy for things to tip from, I like that, to, ooh, that's too much, quickly. And so I, I do very little pets and stop and see, you know, does he squirm closer to me and try to get his, you know, head under my hand or... Um, does he kind of roll over and disengage? And so the pending consent test video, for those of you who haven't seen it, will give you more examples. And I think those uh, video examples are, are, are golden. That's how we learn just tons and tons of examples, seeing lots of dogs in lots of situations. All right, everybody, I will see you in two weeks. I'll still be online um, all this week. So if you have any questions, shoot us an email. You can do that through our website or at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at dogkindtraining.com. If you don't get our um, email newsletter every week, updating you on what has been, um, what our video is about that week and a link to it. If you go to our blog, um, which is the top link on this slide, I think there's something in the sidebar there that lets you sign up for the newsletter. And then if you miss this live or forget about it, you get an email with the link each week to let you know what we covered. All right, folks, I'll see you in a couple weeks. Have a wonderful week.